on the Mount. Very fundamental, very basic. The most powerful word that Jesus ever preached from the Sermon on the Mount. Stop your worrying. Stop it. Right. Look at somebody say, Stop it. Stop, Stop that. that. Now. Cut it out. <laughs> Even truck drivers, when we get on the CB radios, if somebody says something that we don't like, one of the things we say quite often is, Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Stop that worry! Quit wringing your hands! How I many know what worry is? Mm -hmm. Some of you are looking at me like you don't know what worry is. <laughs> it just was, I did get the definition of worry, so you didn't have to look it up. It, it takes me a little bit to get it on the computer, so I have to ask Laurie to help me. But I got a definition for you. How many want to help me? How, what do you think? What is the definition of the word word? I got the amplified over here if you want. What's the amplified say? <laughs> when it says take no thought, what is it? Point five. It says, therefore I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, oh and worried about your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, and about your body, what you shall put on is not your life. Greater in quality than food and the body, far above and more excellent uh -huh. than clothing. All right. Amen. Amen. That's right. You get all worked up over nothing. Oh, that's what he said. When you worry, you're getting worked up over nothing. He said, he simply said, if you look up, what I started to say about Dr. Shuler, he was born in uh, 1926, I think he was. You remember 1926, Mom? What happened in 19, was it 25 or 26? I was born 25. 25. All right. I want to look up something real quick. Hold on to your hats. Dr. Shulu, he said he was born in 1926. So he looked up Matthew 1926. <laughs> Matthew 1926 says, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. <laughs> if you look at the economics, and if you look at finances, and if you look at unemployment, and if you look at everything that's going on, Probably all of us would get a little bit nervous. Mm. I want you to know this morning, the reason that he tells us to stop worrying is that God's got everything still under control. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he's not off somewhere on a journey. He's, he's very much in control yeah. of you. Yeah. You might not feel it this morning, but he's in charge of every one of us. Mm -hmm. you got the hair on our head is numbered. I told you about that meeting. What, what, what's it? It's not counted. Every hair in your head is not, num is not counted. They're numbered. If you combed your hair this morning, got one in the comb, he can tell you if that's hair number 13,400. <laughs> or number 64. He's got the hair on the head num he's numbered. He knows us beginning from end. And he loves us unconditionally. Yeah. This is so, so, so awesome. Yeah. In John 13, 1, he says, having loved his own, he loved them right to the end. Yeah. Never gave up on them. No matter what kind of a scoundrel you've been, that, that's Medway talk. You know what a scoundrel is? It just <laughs> It's a combination of a bunch of stuff. No matter how bad you've been, or how good you've been, he loves you just the way you are. Amen. That finishes it. Doesn't matter if anyone else does or don't, he does. Unconditional love. He loves you when you're right. He loves you when you're wrong. He'll never give up on you. Hallelujah. He's in charge. From beginning to end, he's never given up on us, not on the human race. He's never given up on any. He don't give up on Saddam Hussein. He didn't give up on anybody. He loves his people right to the end. That's one reason he can say, stop your worry. Anyone here worried this morning? No? Some, some have. Yeah. Why? Because the enemy will always throw something at us when we least expect it. So he'll get us to worry. Mm -hmm. If he can get you worrying, then your faith seems to dwindle. And Jesus in this thing was talking about, uh, I went through this one time, and uh, can I go back to Bible college days when God was just trying to instill faith in me? You know, he teaches us, you know. 
And He gives us lessons so that we understand what's going on. It cost me 90s back in the 70s, real early 70s. It used to cost me 90 cents a week to do my laundry. 90 cents. I don't think that buys a washer a lot now, does it? I haven't been done to laundromat for a while. But it used to cost me 90 cents do my laundry. That includes washing and drying. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I had made a vow with the Lord that I would give him, you know, he talks about the tithing. Anyone talk to me about tithing? I can tell you story after story. I've proven it over and over and over and over and over and over again. I can't outgive God no matter what I do. Proven fact. I can't outgive it. If I give it all, somehow it comes back. I don't know how it does work, but it works. I had read that the Lord would want it 10% was a tithe. And I was out to prove God. The Bible says in, in, in Malachi, Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not pull you out of blessing, that there won't even be room enough to receive it. So I was out to prove God. I said, Okay. And the stubborn Jacob's Caswell frame of mind, I said, I'm going to prove you. I'm going to find out who you are. I said, I'll, I'll tell you what, God, if you will meet my every need while I'm here in Bible college, I'll give you 50%, not 10. I'll give you half of everything that comes in. So, he puts us to the test, and I put him to the test. It cost me 90 cents to do my laundry, and every Bible school student depends on the mailbox. That's right. We're hoping for a care package. We're hoping for a letter in the mail. We're hoping for something. That's good, man. I was no exception. Amen? I told the Lord, I'll give you 50%. I'm up to find out who you are. I know this is pretty basic. But when God wants us to have confidence, He takes you where you are. Yes, he, does. he reaches you where you are. And so I I didn't have any finances. And I made a vow with the Lord and said, Mom, my mother told me anytime I needed anything to call home. And they'd try to make sure that I could either get some money or something. That's what she told me. Back in 1971. She said, if you need, if you need anything, Ralph, you call back home. Dad and I are both working and we'll, we'll try to help you all we can. And they did. This particular day, though, I didn't have any money. And I told the Lord when I made vows with Him that I'd never ask anybody for money and I'd never call back home. You bet, you, you, I'm out here, you take care of me. You said, told me not to worry. You take care of me. So it was time to do the laundry and I always, we always, a bunch of us always rode downtown together. One guy says, are you going down the laundromat? I said, well, no. Yes, no. And I didn't say that I didn't have any money. I just said, no, I wasn't going. He knew that was unusual. That morning, early the next morning, I ran upstairs at 9 o'clock. We had 10 minutes between each class, so I ran upstairs real quick, checked the mailbox, nothing in the mailbox. I said, Lord, you told me that you'd take care of me. You said you'd meet every need. That you, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things would be added. I said, I need some money. I ran up to check the mailbox.